Greetings and salutations, humans. Welcome to the channel. Uh, first and foremost, I want to apologize for not uploading a video for the last week or so. As y'all can probably tell by the sound of my voice, I have been pretty doggone sick, really, for like the last nine days. Whatever this mess is, just has not wanted to, to give up. And to be totally honest with y'all, I was just too sick to really go in and upload a video. Well, I'm back today and I am going to be going into a requested guide for Eris. One of the, my previous videos that I mentioned were the best farmable rare champions to help a new player with progression and Eris is on that list. I will link that video down below and I'm going to go in. I'm going to explain to some folks why because I had some people on Facebook as well as in the comment section of that particular video uh, say that they never really used Eris. They don't really understand why she's on that list. Today I'm going to go in and I'm going to explain why that is. Because early game, you got two big problems. One, you need speed gear to help you progress in the arena. So we can build up your great hall. It's very important. Second, you need lifesteal gear to help you start climbing the range to be able to help you survive against the clan boss. Believe it or not, Eris helps with both of those problems. And without further ado, let's just go into it. It's enough introduction and enough apology. I'm not going to explain to y'all why it is that I'm saying this, and I'm more than I'm going to show you how. First, let's go into Eris. Let's go down here into the roster. Eris is a farmable rare champion. You get her from stage six in the Palace of Varia, which is where you get your speed gear. She's also Force Affinity. Let's go into her kit. Her kit, Eris is unique in that she only has two active skills, a passive, and then an aura. Her aura, if you're brand new to the game and if you're playing less than less than 30 days in so far, if you take my advice, if you farm Eris, if you're going to be playing in dungeons at all, Eris is going to be your team lead. And the reason for that is she has ally speed in dungeons by 16%. So that just means that she's going to help your team just run faster. So her passive is called Avenger. It counterattacks an attacker when an ally is attacked. It has a one turn cooldown. So that means if enemy attacks a champion, Eris will then counterattack whoever is that, that attacked your team but it won't counterattack again until she has her next turn her a1 bullseye attacks one enemy grants an extra turn if the target is killed now i'm going to go back to this in just a moment her a3 is exhortation it's on a three turn cooldown it removes one random debuff from all allies has a 60% chance of placing a 30% increased speed buff on allies for two turns. That books up to 100%. Now what's nice about this, as you see, it has this three turn cooldown. Look at her A1. Attacks one enemy. Grants an extra turn if the target is killed. So that means if she kills someone, she gets another turn. She opens up with, this A, with her A2 to make the team go faster, including herself. So if she kills someone, she gets an extra turn, that reduces the cooldown on her A3. And that is a very powerful thing. Anytime that you have an ability or a chance to gain an extra turn, basically you're able to reduce the cooldowns of those skills. And because she only has two active skills, if you're able to get her into what's called a reflex set, that you're able to farm from the ice golem, you have a chance of her just going into this exhortation skill back to back which may or may not be useful. To be honest with you, I haven't ever tried it. I've got mine in a, in a toxic set, which I will now show you. Now, one thing about Eris, you do not have to take her past level 50. I've got mine all the way up to level 60. I am a late mid game, maybe even an early late game player. It just depends on really how it is that you measure those things. But Eris is a fun champion. I like to use her. So I did go ahead and take mine up to level 60, and I did go ahead and get back to Oliver Masteries and get the banner. 
but you do not need to do that with your heiress unless you're just really just trying to build in a a clan boss team running her with Demitha. I've got her with a hit point banner. One thing about Eris, and I'll go over her total stats here in a minute. She is squishy. She's hard to keep alive. She's attack. She is an attack based champion. So you do want to get some health from her whenever you can. I have her in a crit damage amulet. I have her in an attack ring. Again, I got some attack on it. I've also got some extra hit points. And you're going to see that I'm running my Eris in a toxic set early game. It doesn't matter. What you're going to be focusing on is getting her to 100% crit rate. She has to crit to increase her chance of killing someone. Speed boots for your Eris are going to be pretty much mandatory. As you'll be able to see, I've got mine built a little bit different just because I'm, I'm progressed further than what you are if you're early game. But again, I'll go over that here in just a moment. I've got her in an attack chest. I do have my Eris in crit damage gauntlets. Ideally, that's what you want to have happen. But if you're early game, your crit damage gear, basically your, your best offensive gear should be on your starter champion. Whether it's Kale, whether it's Elaine, whoever. Build them up first because you're going to be using them pretty much everywhere. Eris, her job is to be there as a support. She's going to help cleanse off the debuffs, help keep them alive. But... But later on, as you progress, if you're able to get enough crit rate from your other gear to get your Eris into crit damage gauntlets, that's going to pay you dividends in the long run. I've got her in a toxic shield, again, with crit rate. I've got some speed on it. i got speed on the, hel on the helmet. I've got more crit rate on it. Also got a little bit more attack. And on the weapon... Again, I've got crit rate, crit damage, and more speed, and a bit more attack. Total stats on my Eris, 186 speed. Defense is decent at 1,640. I mean, she's not a tank. She's going to fall over if she gets hit. But that's why I have her built with a lot of hit points. Her attack is 3,334. HP is 31,705. Her crit damage is 238%. And her crit rate is at 94%. You want to be, to be as close to 100 as you can. But I mean, work with the work with the gear that you've got. But I'm going to show you. Just getting up that high is going to be helpful. Now, let me go into masteries real quick. And if you're only going to take up to level 50, which is perfectly fine, you want to take the offense tree and the defense tree. The support tree does really nothing for Eris at all. Go into Deadly Precision. Go into Keen Strike. The two major ones that you want is going to be Bring It Down. That just increases her max damage when she's attacking someone with higher max HP than she has. Which is pretty much really everybody. And then Methodical. Methodical is really nice with her because it scales off of her passive and her A1. Increases the damage inflicted by this champion's default skill by 2% each time it's used during battle. Stacks, a crap, stacks across each round in a battle up to 10%. So in campaign, for example, you have three different waves. It's going to stack as she kills people with those waves. The same thing goes to whenever you're killing people in dungeons. It's just going to help her do more damage with that A1. For defense... You want to end down the Retribution, just get an extra chance for a counterattack. I did go with Improved Parry, just to give her a chance in the arena. Because early game, I did use her in the arena. She was my secondary nuker. I've just never gone in and changed the Masteries. Bloodthirst heals this champion by 10% of their max HP when they kill an enemy target. And again, you want your Eris killing as often as she possibly can. That way she gets that extra turn. That reduces the cooldown on her A2, helps you get that cleanse back, and just helps you get back to the fight that much quicker. Then I'm going delay death just to get some damage reduction. And then, like I said, I ended with Retribution. Eris is very viable up to level 50. If you want to just take her up there and then just stop, that's perfectly fine. Like, as you can see, mine is 6-star. She is level 60. I did go down to Warmaster. 
because I do like to try and use her sometimes whenever I'm fiddling around different teams, trying different comps. If you don't really care about her damage versus bosses, and you're thinking about using her more early game in the arena, or just help with killing more minions and waves faster, then Helm Smasher would be a better option. She won't do as much damage against the boss, but she will help you kill enemy, champ uh, enemy champions faster. So now let's just go into why is she helpful. Is again, her, her kit is decent. She is a rare base champion. But I think a lot of people, though, where they get lost, they think about Eris from a mid-game to in-game perspective and that she's really only usable in this situations. But I'm going to show you why early game investing in Eris is going to pay you huge dividends for a very long time. Let's just go into the campaign real quick. And for your first couple months playing Raid Shadow Legends, you're going to be farming in Stage 6. Stage 6 is where Speed Gear drops. And that is, in my opinion, the most important set in the game. You're going to be using Speed in the Arena. Speed sets just increases your base speed overall, helps your tunes go back quicker. And the faster that you go, the faster you're going to be able to get back to your skills. But more importantly, in the arena, especially early game, whichever team goes first is pretty much always going to win. And as you can see, if you look here at your at your drops, Eris is right here. She drops in this in the stage. And so while you're going to be farming here, what you want to do is push down to stage seven. And this is the same whether you're on brutal, whether you're on hard, whether you're on normal. Stage six is going to be where you're going to be farming your speed gear. And you're going to be farming the boss. The boss is going to give you a chance of getting a higher star level piece of gear, including higher rarity than what you would be just by clearing the different waves. So farm the boss. And then, as in the process of farming, you're going to be getting Eris drops. You're going to get multiple copies of her. Use those copies to book out your main Eris that you're going to be using. You don't need to put rare books into her. You're going to get multiple copies of her while you're farming your speed gear. And then she's going to help you out. And with your next step, which is going to be over here in Valdemar Straits. Valdemar Strait, as y'all can see, you saw the red skulls. These are force based champions. Your starter champion is magic based. That means you're going to be getting weak hits. And because you're getting weak hits, you're not able to kill enemies as fast. That's your Kale, your lane, whoever you're using. They're not going to be inflicting maximum damage. In addition to that, they're going to be getting hit harder by these champions because they are weak affinity. Force is stronger than magic. And so it's just going to be a, it's just going to have a harder time. And also, as you can see here, like on stage six, for example, you have these outlaw monks. Well, they poison you. That poison just removes a chunk of your health, and a lot of times that's enough just to kill you. Also, you have your Aothars. They can poison you. They have the ability to lock out your skills, and they have an easier time of just making life miserable for your starter. And then if you get down here to stage seven, to the boss, which is, again, where you're going to be farming for your lifesteal gear, you have a poisoner, a poisoner boss, plus two poisoning minions. And I'm going to show you how Eris is able to remove those problems. Now, I do realize what I'm showing you here is going to be different. What you're going to be experiencing in a on a new account because my account's developed. And I do apologize for that, but I just want to show you how Eris is going to be able to help you out here, okay? So I'm going to drop this down to 1x speed. So Eris is doing her A2. Keep on this on a three turn cooldown. Now Eris is going to go. She kills someone. She kills someone again. This is her A1. She's granting an extra turn every time she kills someone. Her A2 is now back up. She's going to go into her A2. She speeds everybody up. The food is getting a turn that's not ideal for a speed run, but with what it is, 
with what we're working with here is what we got. So right there, you see the low crit rate was the problem. She didn't get the extra turn. That was the Avenger passive that you just saw. And now she got the extra turn and she killed those. And now we're going to get poisoned. Well, we got resi well we resisted the poison. Never mind. See, she got hit. The Avenger passive procced. She was able to go. Earlier game, you're not going to be one-shotting, you know, on brutal the way that I am right here. In the process of the fight, what's going to happen? Your Kale, your Elaine, your Aethel, the pick your poisons, beginning weak hits. Eris is going to go in. She's going to use her A2. She's going to speed up your team. That way everyone's taking a turn faster. She's going to get that counter attack because someone's going to be getting hit. And then she's going to kill someone, reducing the cooldown on her A3, which is then you want to allow her to cleanse off those poisons that you're going to be getting. And reason, and one of the reasons why you want lifesteal gear so much, in addition to lifesteal gear keeping you alive in dungeons, it's what you need to help you stay alive and, and sustain in the clan boss. You need that lifesteal gear. Well, lifesteal gear drops from stage 7. With her being Force Affinity, Eris is going to help you overcome. She's going to help you progress and be able to farm that gear more effectively. No, honestly, she's a pretty easy champion to build. You know, you want to get her as close to 100% crit rate as you possibly can. Keep Help her stay alive. Get her crit damage. Get her as much attack as you can. That way she's hitting as hard as, as possible. You want her to get those killing blows. And just for goons and giggles, I'll go ahead and show you all real quick how she runs in a dungeon. Just do Dragon 20 real quick here. Okay, so here's the team we're going to run with. So this team is pretty accessible, pretty free to play. I've got Eris in the lead. She has the the speed aura by 16% in dungeons. Like I said, after you play the game for 30 days, you're going to get high Katoon. She'll be in the lead instead because she has a faster speed aura than what Eris has. That being said, I'm just trying just to make this as relevant to the topic of this video as possible. I'm using War Maiden, who is another farmable rare champion. She's the only rare in the game that has an AoE defense down. I'm using two starting champions. I'm using Kale and I'm using Elaine. And I'm using Skyle of the Drake, so you get after six months of memory serves. And once she will be there for crowd control and she'll pick someone up if they fall down. Let's get into it and let's see how this goes. And there we have it. It's a accessible team. And as y'all can see, I do have my Eris in the Toxic set because 
I, I, I just I like the champion. I like using her to this day. Uh, her A2, y'all saw it came in uh, in that fight a couple of different times. She's able to clean the poisons off of the dragon. She was speeding the team up. I'm not running an apothecary or another speed booster on this team. Eris is it. I mean, she was doing that job. And y'all saw in that run where she was getting the killing blow a couple times. She got the extra turns. You all saw the extra damage that she was getting off of her A1. Setting the table, letting Elaine and Kale do what they do best, which is just blowing people up. I mean, Eris, she's not a god tier damage dealer. She is an attack champion with support, and the biggest role that she's going to give you is, especially early game, farming stage 9, getting that lifesteal gear. That lifesteal gear is so incredibly important for you to be able to start clearing the clan boss. That way you can start getting the shards and legendary books. Right now, that's the only way you can farm them, is by killing the higher level clan boss. And you need that lifesteal gear to be able to make that happen. And Eris is the first step in climbing that ladder to help you start, be able to progress against the clan boss, be able to help you with that gear. Let's take a look here at these boots. Those are garbage. Goodbye. And another thing is that once you get later on, once you get more developed, once you start going into Doom Tower, you're going to start facing the secret rooms where you got to use rare attack based champions or whatever else. That's where she's going to help you with, help you out as well. She can cleanse those debuffs. She's able to come in. She's able to do some work on. She's able to do some work. Able to just tear some people up. Also in Faction Wars early game, Faction Wars is open today for high elves. I saved a key for this, and I'm just going to run y'all through stage 20 real quick, just so way y'all are able to see. And I mean, she's viable through all these stages. She is. I don't, I don't tell you. I mean, she just, she's good support. Just hop on in here, and I will show y'all what she's able to do. And again, I, I realize that this is a higher end team. I'm running an arbiter in here for the speed and the attack up. I got Tayrell for the defense down, but that's just where I am in the game, and I do apologize for that. Just gonna hop on in, and I'll be quiet, and y'all enjoy the show. And there we have it. So a couple things to point out here on this run is that one, while Arbiter has a turn meter boost, she doesn't have a speed buff. Eris is the second part of that equation. So Arbiter boosts everyone's turn meter. Then Eris puts up that speed buff. This helps the team go that much faster. The other thing is that Arbiter's AI is clinically stupid. If there is a Paragon alive, like on the second wave, she'll never use her her ability to reduce the duration of a debuff so then the fight just goes on forever so if you ever get to that stage if you're using arbiter as your as your buff cleanser just keep that in mind if the paragon is the last one alive you will have to manual it or else the fight will never end because arbiter is too dumb to use her a2 so nice old nice old tidbit for you there and again i i, I will link that video down below about the best farmable rares in Raid Shadow Legends to help you progression. And I hope I was able to make a good case for Eris about why I included her on that list. If you have any uh, any uh, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. If you like this content, 
if you would throw me a like and subscribe, I would appreciate it. And again, I do apologize for the delay. Getting sick just really sucks. But this is Putinbot. I will see y'all later, and I will see y'all in the next one.